of the Northwest at 16 miles an hour. The humidity, a low 24%. David Carlton will kick it off for Arkansas. He'll smack it to Henderson or Green. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the SEC championship on the line today as far as the Western Division is concerned. Here come the Tigers. Henderson from the nine. Looking for running room. Steps outside and slides down at the 23. There was heavy rain yesterday, Renee, but this field was covered, and it should be in pretty good shape. I think it's in great shape. One of the best playing fields anywhere in the country. Matt Mock threw three interceptions last week, but rallied the Tigers 64.4%, better than 2,300 yards, 11 interceptions against 23 touchdowns. You know, Nick Saban talked a little bit about turnovers, big plays, quarterback efficiency, which Jordy touched on, and who controls the line of scrimmage will determine who wins this contest. Justin Vincent is in the backfield. He is making his sixth consecutive start. Mock hands off to the freshman from Lake Charles, and he drags a razor back across the 26-yard line. Justin Scott, the defensive end, made the stop. Vincent and Jones in the backfield. Henderson, Clayton, and Edwards are the primary receivers. Up front for LSU, it's Andrew Whitworth, Rudy Nicewanger, Ben Wilkerson, Stephen Peterman, and Rodney Reed. Second and eight facing Matt Malk, who will enter dental school at some point in his academic future. Vincent. Getting a block, but then the hole closes. He picks up another two as Caleb Miller, the strong side linebacker, was the tackler. Defensively for Arkansas, a team giving up better than 21 a game. Justin Scott, Arian Dixon, Scott Davenport in the middle, and Jeff Huckabee is the defensive end. He's got 12 tackles for loss. Miller, Sims, and Jackson are the linebackers. And in the secondary, it is Richardson, Beasley, Pua with 108 tackles, and Carroll. And Nate Living's at starting at left guard in place of Nicewanger after a few weeks off. His start, his first start in about a month. Joseph Adai is in the ball game. Mark to throw on third down. As time dumps it short, Skyler Green's got it, but he does not get enough yardage for the first down. Mark had a lot of time to survey the field, but Skyler Green did not get downfield far enough to make a first down reception and for one of the very few times on their opening drives this year the Tigers are forced to punt. Coverage dictated that Matt Maw could not get it deep enough to Skylar Green as wide receivers were covered hit a double off to Skylar Green as a safety valve. Donnie Jones one of the best in the country at better than 43 yards per kick on 49 boots 67 was his longest Marvin Jackson is back to receive it for Arkansas. Jones hit the heck out of the ball last week this one hanging in the air and the catch is made and flags go down that's going to be a call against LSU in coverage interfering with the right to make the catch will be the call against LSU and it looked like Adrian Mays was down there we'll see the senior was winding up for a big hit and uh, a do tap right there by Francis but Adrian Mays his contact really caused that uh, that penalty just now Kick catch interference against the kicking team. Interference with the opportunity to make the catch. 15 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Adrian Mays got to him first and uh, disrupted the play, and then there was another hit following that. So LSU will dig in defensively at the Arkansas 39 yard line. You see Matt Jones's numbers pretty darn good 60%, 1,768 yards, 16 touchdowns, only five interceptions. He is deceptively fast and very strong, and it is Cedric Cobbs getting the start. He's got seven touchdowns on the ground. This team runs 66% of the times, so very front-loaded with running. Jones working to the right side. Cedric Washington coming to the near side, and not much room. The Tiger defense has been intractable. Cobbs, Pierce, Smith, Wilson, and Peters in the backfield and the wide receivers. Up front, Lacey, Reed, Doty, Bokerman, and Andrews. Sean Andrews, an All-America candidate, had already named a one All-America team, and he is a very good right tackle. And a huge guy at 6'6", 353 pounds. Second and long, high formation. Cobbs, nowhere to go. 
And a flag goes in late. Kyle Williams was one of the primary tacklers for LSU. Let's check the penalty marker. They be coming back against the Razorbacks. Arkansas averaging 240 yards per outing, which is tops in the SEC fifth nationally. I'm not sure that somebody didn't grab Cobb's face mask at the end of the run. Let's take another look. It's a good look right here, and it does look like Marcus Spears may have been Incidental the culprit. Incidental face mask against the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. Well, that's two penalties for the Tigers. They had 10 against Ole Miss and overcame them, but uh, that's about twice as many as they would like to get in a ball game. DeCorey Birmingham now has replaced Cobbs, and Birmingham in Cobbs' absence over the last month or so with some injuries which have slowed him down has done a nice job. Tiger fans may remember Birmingham caught that 31-yard touchdown pass last year to beat the Tigers. There is room on the right side. And this one is going to the end zone. It is Birmingham who gets into the end zone as the Tigers couldn't find him early and then bumped into each other midway through that run. It's an early score for Arkansas. Birmingham has just made his first touchdown reception of the year. It's his 16th catch overall. And like they did against Ole Miss, the Tigers fall behind very early. And he said how Birmingham burned the Tigers last year. He comes back and starts his game off putting the Razorbacks ahead. Ball Ciro will attempt the extra point. He has missed only one this year and now 38 tries. So DeCorey Birmingham. Catches it in the right flat. He nearly stepped out of bounds, but he gets it to the end zone. And the Tigers trail early as Birmingham, weaving, gets six very early for Arkansas. Really misinterpreted and thought he had stepped out of bounds and really let him go by. Well, it didn't take Arkansas long to get into the end zone. 7-0, the Razorbacks lead. It was a defensive touchdown early last week that put LSU behind the eight ball, but the Tigers overcame that problem. Let's see if the offense can get it going now after an early Arkansas lead. And we said last week, Michael Clayton talked about that nothing's going to rattle this team. They won the SEC championship two years ago. They'll bounce back. Nothing gets them too high, not too low. Three plays, 61 yards. It took 71 seconds. Birmingham's 53-yard touchdown reception. Got Arkansas into the end zone. It was his first touchdown catch of the year. David Carlton will boot it for Arkansas, and it's coming right into your living room. Anderson from a yard back. Has some room. He's dumped near the 27-yard line, a 28-yard return. Say, Tiger fans, LSU basketball is back in action at home Tuesday, the 16th of December. They take on the University of Utah. Tickets are just $10. It's a great matchup. Tickets available through the LSU ticket office. Come out and show your support for LSU battling Utah in a game on national television. For more information, log on to lsusports.net. The Utes and the Tigers in mid-December. Tigers go minus a tight end once again with trips right. Vincent shakes a tackle, makes a move, and is dragged down after a first down run. He was taken out by Jimmy Beasley, and Jimmy Beasley was the last line of defense for the Razorback secondary. Jimmy Beasley from his rover back position, and yet a little shake from Kevin Falk, reminiscent of Kevin Falk. You see the numbers on Justin Vincent, averaging a very respectable 5.6 yards per tote. <laughs> So Vincent runs it out to the 42-yard line, and that's where LSU has a first down, trailing 7-0. And the officials step in and will prevent the play from unfolding as Michael Clayton Substitution infraction against the offense. Mm. Five-yard penalty, first down. Now that's three penalties for LSU inside of four minutes. Not a good start for the Tigers from a flag department. Don't know who may have checked in. They did go to a four-wide receiver set, Dwayne Bow late. They have come in and checked in late. Dwayne Bow, who wears number 81, sprints out to the top of the formation on the right side. Two receivers on either side. First and 15 for LSU. Long gives to Vincent. Justin shaking, baking. He's got the penalty yardage. Back and a lot more. First down, LSU inside Arkansas. 
Arkansas Territory. Bo Mosley, a 5'10 senior, made a saving stop for the Razorbacks. And Justin Vincent broke a number of tackles. You'll see right here, breaks one. He'll break another one right here. Tony Boa, who has 109 stops on the season, another shot at him. And finally, the fourth Arkansas tackler brings him down. So Justin Vincent has run for a couple of first downs on nifty runs in this drive. First and 10, LSU at the Arkansas 40. Joseph Adai is standing to Mark's left. Matt perhaps changing the play, working from shotgun formation. Adai with a little counter, running hard through the middle. To the 31, he's a yard short of a first down. Sims, the weak side linebacker, was the first razor back to get to him. Gaping hole by the Tigers for Joseph Adai. Good pull, trap right here on the outside. That's Rodney Reed giving a nice cushion for Joseph Adai to pick up close to first down territory, and in fact he does. Eric, Eric Edwards also in the game as a tight end. Great block has really come a long way this year. Adai up near 450 yards now on the season on his 96th tote, averaging better than four and a half yards per carry. Mock throwing on second and a yard, slips, gets back up, fires it over the middle. A sliding catch is made at the six-yard line by Devery Henderson. Henderson was able to cradle that ball and keep it off the grass. First and goal, LSU. He had beaten Lawrence Richardson on the inside, and you see Matt Mock collecting himself and throwing as he's running a post. And now they say a penalty will bring this play back as Devery Henderson collects the ball at the five. Tigers will be penalized. The play is coming back, and it's the fourth flag against LSU in the first five minutes of the game. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat second down. Well, Renee, the Tigers have averaged almost a flag per minute here in the first five, and this has got to stop. Nick Saban, this is really gets his dander up. Good protection by the offensive front, giving Matt Mock time as he slipped, collected himself and still had time to deliver the ball to Devery Henderson. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, meaning the uh, penalty was assessed from about the line of scrimmage. Four penalties for 35 yards. Tigers go right back to the ground, and they've had some success there, haven't they? Especially that youngster, Justin Vincent. Great blocking up front. McGill, Reed, Peterman, Wilkerson, and Whitworth doing an outstanding job. You see right there, Nate Living's number 71 reclaim, reclaims his left guard position, the starting spot again, and Matt Mock doing an outstanding job running this offense. Then Michael Clayton leads the SEC in both receptions and yardage. He's primed for another big season. First Tiger receiver to go over 700 yards three consecutive years. He has not caught one yet. He has caught a ball in every game in which he has been eligible for LSU. Benson on the counter is caught from behind as he crosses the 25 and he gets to the 23-yard line. And early, Renee, the Tigers seem to have found something with those counters to Justin Benson. Up front, Dixit and Davenport can be had, the middle interior guys for Arkansas. And they're testing those linebackers. They're kind of active, and this is a good way of slowing them down a little bit. But, you know, we talked about the running game, but LSU exclusive. Well, you see the wind there gusting out of the north, and that is in the face of the Tigers. So that will knock balls down headed in that direction, either in punting or place kicking. The Tigers face second down and need about three from the 20. A die is in the backfield. Joseph breaking back. Sliced down at the 21, a fine tackle there, as it appeared a die was about to run for some good yardage. And that was uh, Ola Jabutu, one of the linebackers. Mid linebacker sophomore, and he really chopped him down, cutting against the grain, finding a hole, just zone blocking up front, and short of a first down. Ola Jabutu with 78 stops is the third leading tackler for Arkansas, a 222 pound sophomore. He was a high school player of the year in 3A in Georgia in high school. Third and a yard, Kevin Steltz is in the backfield at fullback. He's leading the blocking. A die hit very hard at the 20. Jeremy Harrell plugged the hole. This is going to be close. Really put a hat on him this time and gap control by the Arkansas Razorbacks and maybe did not allow LSU to gain sufficient yardage for the first down. He more or less just rolled off and ran into him and that <laughs> that was a excuse me tackle almost. Steven Peterman, number 72, was trying to find somebody to block, but the Razorbacks penciled in behind him, and he raced.
Joseph a dive. It is a first down, however. The Tigers get just enough. It'd have been inter interesting to see if Nick Saban would have gone for this, kicking into the wind, field goal, or going for the first down, and we, we don't have to make that decision. I think this is four down territory for the <laughs> Absolutely. Tigers, at least on that uh, particular choice, if it would have come to that. Arkansas scored early on a pass to the tailback to Corey Birmingham. LSU trying to tie the score with a first down at the Razorback 20. Everybody in the pattern, and that ball is rerouted on its way out to Skyler Green. That one looked like it sailed a bit. Skyler Green had no chance to climb the ladder and catch it. Caught up in a wind gust and may have carried it a little bit more than Matt Mock cared to, and incomplete. That wind is blowing 15 to 25 miles an hour. And nobody tipped it. It just got away. And you like to get Skyler Green out in space where he can do most of his damage with an outstanding speed. Look, good look at the wind right there. It's really going to be gusty and windy all afternoon. Vincent is in the backfield standing at Mark's right. Fumble. Matt may have jumped back on it. Mark. Could not get the uh, fake or the exchange with Vincent, but fortunately, LSU's quarterback was able to dive on it. It appeared that was a design play for Matt Mock to keep it around the right side, and the exchange was not clean. But he did have some open space around the right side. They were really sucking in, anticipating a handoff to the, to the tailback. So now it is third down and better than 10 yards to go. Joseph Adai has re-entered the game for LSU. Tight end Eric Edwards is on the right side. Henderson and Green come to the left side. Clayton is in a slot over there as well. Mock has time. Mock to the end zone. Batted away, intended for Henderson. And swatted down by Marvin Jackson, a 5'9", 168-pound senior cornerback. And Matt Mark facing a dime coverage by Arkansas, throws into triple coverage, into zone coverage, and Devery Henderson just couldn't get deep enough. A lot of receivers, a lot of hands in that end zone, and Matt Mark thought he had it, not lucky to get away with no interception on that last play. Now Chris Jackson, who hit a 45-yarder last week, will try this one from 38. It is plenty long, it is plenty good. Jackson had an early field goal answering Ole Miss's score last week. And he does the same thing here. So LSU is on the scoreboard. 6.26 remains, first quarter. Arkansas out in front, 7-3. to three. Oh, they bring it back. I've seen the show. It's a great fishing show. Is it filet for him? Look, I'll clean him. I just want to catch him. I want, I want to see if Scott Snyder gets anything out of this. I know he does. A backbone every once in a while. Cedric Washington and DeCorey Birmingham are back to receive the kick. It bounces around, taken by one of the up people at the 20. And the Tigers are able to stop the return at about the 33-yard line as Jamar Gallon was uh, able to bring it back. For the Tigers, it took five minutes and some change to go 52 yards in 11 plays. Jackson's 38-yard three-pointer into a stiff breeze has put LSU on the scoreboard. Talked to Chad Lavely earlier this week. He said Cadillac Williams and Shad Williams of Auburn and Alabama were home run hitters. Cedric Cobbs is like a, a hammer, a maul. He just pounds away at you, doesn't give up. He's in the backfield now is Cedric Cobbs. Loose football. It's going back to Arkansas. This Arkansas team has only turned it over 17 times, 10 fumbles and seven interceptions. Four exchange that time from the center. Doty to Matt Jones. Tigers on top, but uh, just a second late. Eighth in the nation in turnover margin. Plus 1.09 per game. That big fellow number 80 is a tight end, and they'll probably follow him. The ball is loose. The Tigers pick it up. Each other in the backfield. We'll watch it again. But Eric Alexander 
was behind the pack, picked it up, and rumbled into the end zone. And that was the fifth touchdown scored on defense by the Tigers this year. Poor exchange between Pierce and nice play by the defense. Eric Alexander picks it up, takes it to the house. Again, that's the fifth touchdown the defense has scored to help this highly rated defense this year of LSU. The extra point is up and it is good by Jackson. So the Tigers take advantage of a turnover. Let's take another look. This touchdown gives LSU the lead. Alexander on the loose ball and into the end zone. The new score, 10-7 LSU. An RV Center to experience the largest inventory of luxury motorhomes and conversion. Here, the defense recovering its 10th fumble. This one coming back by Eric Alexander, a 25-yard return for a touchdown. And the Tigers, after giving one up early, now lead 10-7. I wonder how many fans can remember the other four. Jason Ledoux returned one for a touchdown. Jack Hunt had two interceptions for scores. And Travis Daniels, one against Mississippi State. Five outstanding returns for scores. Chris Jackson will boot it to DeCorey Birmingham or Cedric Washington if he hits it deep. You see how much this wind is blowing. Lynn, that field goal by Chris Jackson earlier has really shown how far he's come. He's really relaxed. He was trying to drive the ball too much earlier this year, but he's learned to kick off the surface. Done a pretty good job. He's in his zone now and doing a great job. Daniel Francis will hold the ball for Jackson. I think he'll probably hit one on the ground again, Renee. Uh, Renee, you just can't kick it very deep. Well, I'm wrong. He hits it deep, and he hits a pretty darn good one. It's Washington from inside the five. He does not get back to the 20. So Jackson into the wind. Got a lot of leg into that one. <laughs> if you see the Adrian Mays cover, look like a... A mini bus released a break and ran over a picket fence. He ran over about two or three Arkansas would-be blockers. <laughs> it was not pretty. And your favorite special teams guy, Gino, made the stall. Oh, Gino. Well, offensively, the Tigers are going against this, or defensively, the Tigers are going against this offense. Pretty darn good. 447 yards per game. First in the SEC. First in points scored. First in rushing yardage. And the place is getting a little loud. He's dragging a Tiger with him. That is Laron Landry, the number one tackler on this team, holding on for dear life. Great cutback by Cobbs. Good reading here, good vision. Cuts through a hole, looks for a cavity, and does a great job of running with his eyes. And Laron Landry brings him for a piggyback ride for five yards, but shows the strength in those legs. Cedric Cobbs, a senior, over 1,000 yards coming into this game. 5.6 yards per carry, eight touchdowns. Arkansas operates from its own 35. Cobbs again, but a much different result as the middle of that Tiger line pinched in on him and Kyle Williams was the first defender to get to him. Cobbs really can break a long run, Lynn. He was a player of the SEC Player of the Week against Tulsa. He had 145 yards and 198 against Bama was the SEC Player of the Week once again, twice this year. Well, he's a pretty good student, too. He's a drama major, an honor roll student, and he wants to become an actor after his football days are over. Hmm. Second and nine with 426 remaining in what has been an entertaining first quarter. Jones rolling. Throwing back. He's got Harris with some room to run. He is down to the Tiger 40. They knock him down at the 39-yard line. And it was Eric Alexander who had to run a long way and catch up with Stephen Harris. He does everything that you're not supposed to do here as a quarterback. Runs to the right, looking for a receiver, throws across the bow. Luckily, there's wind and catch it, but again, the receiver just kept working, working, and worked his way out. Eric Alexander makes the stop before too much damage was, was done. Stephen Harris has not been one of the most popular receivers. That's only his 18th catch. But that throwback run gives Arkansas position, and Cobbs is shaking tacklers. Cedric Cobbs inside the 30. He's down to the 27 before Jack Hunt stopped him. 6'1", 225 pounds. He has mobility, and he has power. And he's really overcome a lot of adversity. He had a toe injury in 2002, missed three and a half games. 
2001 had seven touchdowns, but a hamstring injury curtailed that season. And as a uh, 2000 uh, separated his shoulder, missed the season as a freshman, had an outstanding year, uh, 98 yards, uh, and play of the game against Texas. But he's, he's really overcome a lot to get where he is. First and ten. Jones pressured, hit, throws it as he is knocked down, and he appeared to get it out of bounds legally. Lionel Turner was all over it. This crowd wants a grounding penalty, but Matt Jones was able to get outside the tackle box. And he was able to throw it beyond the line of scrimmage. You're looking at a 6'6", 237-pound specimen. Lionel Turner just can't bring him to the turf soon enough. Does get rid of the ball incomplete third. Make it a second down for the Razorbacks. Matt Jones is difficult to tackle cleanly. There is Lionel Turner, the junior from Walker. Second and ten. Cobbs keeps. Tigers are on him. It's Chad Lavallee, the All-America, who was not influenced by play action. That's one reason why the postseason honors start rolling in for Chad Lavallee. Good read by Lavallee, but he had penetration, got into the backfield. That's his 15th tackle for loss. Great job by the senior from Marksville playing his last game in Tiger Stadium. 15 tackles for loss, six sacks. First team All-American for a very deserving honors for that young man. From the Football Writers Association of America, probably one of several All-America uh, rewards that are coming his way. Jones sets up the middle screen. He's got the big fellow in the middle. That's Peters. A 6'5", 320-pound tight end, but he could not lumber for the first down. And you get Peters and Andrews on the right side. It kind of leans that side of the field a little bit. What a big target there. 19 grabs this year thus so far, four touchdowns. What were you telling me about how Chad Lavallee <laughs> described the offensive line? There is a penalty marker down, so we'll get to that story in just a moment. Let's check the penalty marker. The LSU already has been penalized four times. This is an illegal lineman downfield. So that's a good penalty. That is. I was talking to Chad Lavallee this week, Lynn, and he, he's barefoot. And you can see right here as Matt Jones facing a blitz from both sides. And an offensive lineman drifted right there, sifted, drifted down in as Mark Bokeman drifted down. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. I think 71 Bokerman and 50 Reith were both downfield. And get quick to the story, Chad Lavallee had his left shoe off. He said, look at my big foot. This is the offensive line of Arkansas. The big toe is Sean Andrews. He's much bigger than everyone else. It goes down as you go left. So Sean Andrews, the big toe on his right, on his left foot. Well, Ciro will attempt the field goal. It'll be a 40-yard attempt. And he had just enough. Well, did it surprise you a little bit that uh, LSU did not take the penalty yardage? A little bit, but uh, Nick Saban was just gambling that this guy could not convert and surprised a couple of people here and now tie up the score. 10-10, we have a ball game. Goal 11 tries this year. It comes with two minutes and one tick remaining in the first quarter. Well, some folks thought maybe this would be a defensive game, but already we've had 20 points scored in the first quarter. Tracy McGrady and the Orlando Magic look to steal a victory from the New Orleans Hornets Tuesday night at 5.30. See if the Hornets can keep the Magic in their hands. Tuesday at 5.30, right here on the exclusive home of New Orleans Hornets basketball, Cox Sports Television. There are some Tiger fans doing anything they can to keep warm on a chilly afternoon in Baton Rouge. The sun is shining, as you see, but that wind is whistling out of the north. Mid-50s was the temperature at game time, and uh, that's about as high as it'll get today. We won't expect snow flurries, but it's going to drop in the 30s before this is all over with the wind chill factor. You're going to look at uh, some Green Bay-type weather. LSU is the only team in the country among 1A football that has allowed no more than 19 points in a single game this year. Arkansas already has 10 in the first quarter. They're really doing a great job. Thus far, you know, they, that, they, they didn't look in sync earlier in the game. Inland, they've kind of settled down a little bit. Surprised me a little bit that they've gone 
pretty much exclusively to the running game and not pass the ball. Haven't heard uh, Michael Clayton's name too much, Devery Henderson, but that play was called back and overshot Skylar Green in one toss. If the averages hold, this will be about all Arkansas will get today. LSU averaging 9.36 points per game allowed defensively. And it certainly helps that the defense turned over some points and brought the Tigers back to a tie. Seven plays, 57 yards. Some nice runs by Cobb in the drive. It took three minutes and 22 seconds before Balsero culminated it with the field goal. Devery Henderson and Skyler Green are back to receive the kickoff from David Carlton. There is Skyler Green, who leads the nation in punt returns. And once again, the, uh, the football is blown down to the ground. Skyler Green needs 61 yards this game and returns to surpass Eddie Kinnison for uh, that honor. He's averaging about as much for punt return as he is for kickoff return. How unusual is that? <laughs> Shows how good he is. He's an explosive runner. Credit the blocking up front from as well. Give those lanes to run through, Lynn. Anderson will get another try from the nine. One miss out to the 25-yard line. So Devery. Gives LSU respectable field position. The offense comes to the field with less than two minutes to play in the first quarter. A 10-10 ball game. Wouldn't be surprised to see Matt Mock go to the air a little bit this time, perhaps with a, a slant to Clayton or Devery Henderson and let him get out in space to Skylar Green and see what they can do. Vincent has run the ball well in the first quarter. David Jones is in at tight end. Clayton is in motion, setting up on the right side now. Vincent is nailed. He could not get out of his tracks. He was hit very, very hard before he could even get started. Huckabee leading the teams in tackle for loss with 12, make it number 13, and he came off the corner. Defensive end was once a middle linebacker, and he's got that explosive attack into the backfield, and good play by Huckabee, just a junior. H-U-C-K-E-B-A, but it's pronounced Huckabee. He beat Whitworth to the outside, a nice charge. That's the 13th tackle for loss by the defensive end. He is fifth on the club in stops. Mark keeping, running up the middle. And he goes down at the 31 or 32 yard line in the grasp of Mosley. Caleb Miller from his single linebacker position, number 43, also helped in that stop of Matt Mock, and he's close to first down. On a third and about four yards. You know, the Tigers last week a lot, Lynn, when they went to three and four wide receivers, ran the ball a lot, surprisingly, instead of passing it. And want to see if you'll use that uh, formation again today. Well, it's a passing formation here with nobody in the backfield. Two receivers left, two to the right, third and about five. Looking, throwing it short. It's a dime. Choking up the near sideline. Joseph is inside Arkansas territory. First down, Tigers at the Razorback 44 as Ahmad Harris made the hit. And LSU on third and five converts. That was his 11th grab via the air. Nice little isolation with Joseph a die out in the flat. And Carroll does make the stop, and not before the damage was done. First down, Tigers. LSU has converted 43% of its third downs this year. And Arkansas has allowed only 36% to the opposition. Really stout defense, and they, they disguise, they move around a lot, and a kind of defense to get a read, kind of tough defense to get a read on. 11 catches now for a die, including an early touchdown. Walk to the air again. Walk wings it deep. Complete inside the five. Henderson had his hands on it, and Lawrence Richardson was able to rake it away. Just outstanding defensive play by the senior from Galveston, Texas, Lawrence Richardson. 4-4 speed, good closing speed right here. Just got his paw in there and ripped it out. Good break of the ball, good technique, and that's why he's so highly thought of. And that ball just slightly underthrown 
into the teeth of a stiff northerly breeze. And Devery Henderson had got deep on him and had a, two, a step or two on Richardson, but he just good closing speed. Richardson out of Galveston. Second down and 10. Steiner Green drops it, picks it up on the speed. Reverse. Tight ropes the sideline. And he is down to the 17 yard line. How about that? Jimmy Beasley ran him out of bounds. What a fortunate bounce right off the turf into Skyler Green's hands. Landy Locke smiles on Skyler Green. He had a score against Arkansas last year, if you may recall. Really tight ropes. That's sidelines. Cuts it back, puts a good move on Batman, Ahmad Carroll. Bumped out of bounds. First down, Tigers, but. Very athletic play by Skylar Green to Southmore. Skylar Green had rushed twice before that one for a 12-yard average. And that speed reverse out of the wide receiver gives LSU the ball with a first down at the 17. Ball keeping, now throwing. A diving catch made by Skylar Green. How about that for some deft ball handling and some recognition? And that will close out the first period of play as the Tigers are inside the red zone. Oh, we have had a dandy in the first quarter, haven't we? Arkansas 10, LSU 10. The sights, the sounds of Tiger Stadium in the final home game of the year. SEC champions? Not yet, but the Tigers are on their way. 10-10 after one. Experience the largest inventory of luxury motorhomes and conversion coaches in the Gulf South. Louisiana's largest Monaco dealer has a wide selection of new and used motor coaches, including Prevost conversions. All coaches qualify for long-term tax-deductible financing. Factory-authorized technicians keep your RV operating safely and efficiently. And on-site storage means your RV is ready to go at a moment's notice. Life's a show, so take it on the road at Roadshow Coach and RV Center in New Orleans. Uh, Jordy would come up with that crossover dribble. I think he worked with him a little bit. Yes, he did. Second down from the red zone. Malk on the keeper, trying to pick his way. He spins to the 10. That play perhaps designed to come back around the right side. Nothing was available there, and Malk managed to get a couple of yards out of it following the middle of the line. Well, he froze the defensive end briefly, momentarily, but uh, those plays were good design to freeze that guy. And I think they're going to try this, and they'll come back with the reverse and really catch him off guard. But Matt Mock doing a good job of, of running this offense and keeping it in sync thus far. A lot of running. they averaging 172 yards per game, already 104 in the first quarter. Joseph Adai is standing at Mock's right. It's a passing formation. LSU needs to get to the two-yard line to keep the drive in line. Clayton in motion. Mock looking that way. Throwing it. Clayton has it inside the five. He stretches to the end zone, and it's a touchdown. continue to pile up for the junior combination of Matt Mock and Michael Clayton. Michael Clayton with that grab ties the all-time re reception record, touchdown record in LSU history. He's got 19 career touchdowns. Chris Jackson, who has not missed an extra point this year, socks it through. He is 16 for 16. And LSU's Tigers on a reception by Michael Clayton and the stretch to the end zone. Regain a seven-point lead very early in the second quarter. Oh, LSU fans! Are you or someone you know LSU's number one fan? Then pay attention to this important announcement. Presenting the ultimate LSU collectible, it's Mike the Tiger. He sings and dances to the greatest LSU song ever. There has never been anything like it. My name's Mike, I'm a fighting tiger. Yes, I hail from LSU. Give me baseball, football, baskets. My game plan is a whipping you. LSU knows how to party. We're not boring like Tulane. Yes, we're loud. Yes, we're proud. History shows our claim to fame. Then they'll meet us up Death Valley. They will have no place to hide. Get your Mike the Dancing Tiger for only $24.95 or two for $40. Call 1-800-844-9773 now. My daddy will love this. Quantities are limited, so call and get yours today. 
LSU 17, Arkansas 10. Michael Clayton catching a school record touchdown reception. This is number 20 for his career. He goes in motion. This does a little square out right here. Breaks a tackle by Richardson into the end zone. Breaks the plane. Touchdown, Tigers. And Michael Clayton also plays in special teams. He will be covering this kickoff for LSU. You know, Matt Mark, one more touchdown toss. He ties Jamie Howard for third in career touchdown passes. Outstanding by Matt Mark as well. A lot of records are falling here, Lynn. Yes, they are. Clayton will keep the ball upright as Chris Jackson approaches it. He'll kick it to either Cedric Washington or to Corey Birmingham. Birmingham from the two. Out to the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. Michael Clayton was in on the tackle for LSU. Well, well you score a touchdown, <laughs> then you hold for the uh, kickoff, and then you run down there and you tackle the guy coming back your way. Well, he's jacked up along with Daniel Francis. Number 14 does it all. You see, waiting and waiting. Boy, he steps up and puts his shoulder in there, and outstanding job. This is why they think he can play safety as well. He's going to be an outstanding player on the next level when he decides to go. Meanwhile, there is a Tiger down, and this is Laron Landry, the super freshman from Butte, who's a leading tackler for the LSU defense. While they work on Laron Landry, we will tell you that the Tigers, in a wild one so far, are leading 17 to 10. Say, Tiger fans, don't miss the excitement of Lady Tiger basketball. Now bring the kids and have some fun with the purchase of the Lady Tiger Family Six Pack presented by Coca-Cola. For just $100, now listen to this, you get four tickets to six great, great Lady Tiger games and four free Cokes at each game. There will be family-oriented prizes and entertainment at those games. And for more information or to get your tickets, log on, you know where, lsusports.net. Renee, let's, uh, let's look a couple of times and see how this injury occurred to Leron Landry. He's wearing number 30. Boy, and he just hit, might have got a stinger. And his shoulder, he did hit with his head and his shoulder. Comes in from the side, puts his shoulder right into him. So right here, did hit low with his head. His head ducked a little bit, and that's why they're, they're concerned right now. Uh, when is there ever a stinger or a loss in your limbs, and you can see he comes, ducks his head, and just hit him on the thigh pad, and just goes down. They won't take chances with this. If there's any doubt as to what injury it may be, they'll, they'll make sure they uh, secure him and take him off the field. So Leron Landry is being helped to the sideline. He leads the team with 67 tackles. And this brings me to a point. That 67 team leadership is probably 50 or 60 tackles behind the leaders on the opposition this year. You say, well, how can that be? Well, it's because these Tigers are so well dispersed defensively, it's not one guy, as it has been in other years. But everybody contributes to this national leading defense for LSU, and it's interesting every week that Arkansas's number one tackler, for example, has nearly twice as many as the number one guy for LSU, Leron Landry. Great point, Lynn. Tony Bull with 109 stops coming into this game, and it does go to show how so many guys are involved for the good of the team. 9.4 points per game in points per game, number one in the country, 256 per game, third in the country, 57.7 in denying the rush, first in the nation, fifth in passing efficiency defense at 94.3. Those numbers win championships. Really do, and, and uh, right now the Tigers are doing a pretty good job with a seven-point lead. And now with Tom turn over to the defense and see what they can do. Travis Daniels is in the game, I believe, replacing Landry flags. Go flying, and uh, we'll try to pick up who may be in the secondary replacing Landry. It does appear to be Travis Daniels, but we'll uh, gander out there. Dead ball, false start on the offensive line. Five-yard penalty, first down. And I think the shifting up front by Chad Lavely and company may have confused Arkansas and made him a premature movement. But, yes, Travis Daniels usually spells around Landry. Lou Gay will come in at cornerback uh, for this move. There's Chad Lavallee, one of the anchors in the middle. Brent 
Randall Gay is in the game. Cedric Cobbs running in the secondary. The chase is on. The big fellow can motor. Webster and Gay finally push him out of bounds near the 20-yard line. This guy has speed, he's got power, and he is coming right into your living room. Very explosive. He was rumored to have a 4-4 speed before the injuries. He just pulls away, puts in an extra gear, and Corey Webster is no slouch in pursuit. Finally catches him, but Lou Gay slowed him up, and Corey Webster made the stop. Wow. Let's go down on the sideline with uh, Jordy Holtberg and an injury update. Laron Landry, a slight concussion. He's going to be okay. May not get in before the half, though. Jordy, thank you very much. Cedric Cobbs romping and stomping on his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. Cedric Cobbs running over Tigers. Gets into the end zone on two long scoring, uh, two long runs. And he just bowled his way over Travis Daniels on the way to the Tiger end zone. That was his ninth scoring run of the campaign, and he just did it with his legs, just running over people around him and refused to go down. Yards after contact, great for that young man. So we have had a lot of points scored early here. Balsero will attempt the extra point. This for the tie. It's a low kick, but it is good. Well, here comes Cedric Cobbs. He's on his way to the Tiger end zone. And once again, we're brand new. The wonder of a new... The Tigers are fighting for it. So is Arkansas near the 34-yard line. It hit and it backed up toward the kicking team, and the Tigers are on it. And that was near disaster on a ball that hung in the air and then bit on its way back toward the Arkansas team. And David like Jones may have jumped on it. That was like a golf shot. Keith Zinger trying to run up and, and get on it, and David Jones did save it for the Tigers. Wow, that was a, a really avoided a disaster there. Whew. Take a deep breath if you're a Tiger fan. Carey is in the backfield for the first time. First down, LSU at its own 35. Chiron dragging a couple of people with him. And there was a flag dropped way back by the back judge. Some 30 yards from the line of scrimmage. So we will check this deep penalty marker. There's another one on the near sideline. There's one. That's the one in the uh, shadow on the sideline. Illegal participation on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Whoa. Penalties have not been frequent against Arkansas today, but that's a big one in favor of LSU. That's a costly one against the Razorbacks. That's too many folks on the field. <laughs> Houston Nutt is not real happy about that. Former quarterback at Arkansas. He played basketball and football at Arkansas. Switched over to Oklahoma State, played the same two sports. And Jimmy Johnson was his coach with the Cowboys. Oklahoma State. From midfield, first down LSU early in the second quarter. We are tied at 17. Oh, will throw. Looking. Throwing for Henderson. Almost a fingertip catch, and Devery misread that ball just a little bit. He gave up on that route, on that post pattern, a little too soon, and did not anticipate. I think the win had something to do with that, Lynn. Matt Mark aired it out. Win carried it a little further than perhaps Devery Henderson anticipated. Air it out, nice throw, nice delivery, nice follow through, and Devery Henderson just kind of gave up on his run a little too soon. Lawrence Richardson, nice close. At about three or four steps before the ball entered Henderson's range, he had just shortened his step, took a little chop step, and then tried to recover. But he did beat the gentleman who's a Jim Thorpe candidate, Lawrence Richardson. Second down from midfield. Harry trying to wiggle, and he does for five to the 45. Chiron was tackled by Tony Bua. Bua out of John Curtis, so he's not far from home. No, he's not. He had 19 stops against the Gamecocks. He was the SEC Player of the Week earlier. What a gamey player it is. He played linebacker, moved to free safety, but he plays that monster guy, and he's all over the field, an all-SEC performer. Third and five now for LSU from the Arkansas 45-yard line. Razorbacks 
scored early. Tigers came back to take a 10-7 lead. And then moved out in front 17-10. The Arkansas Razorbacks have come back behind Cobbs. It dies in the backfield. That shot is downfield to the tight end Eric Edwards. First down in the shoe. A dart right into the belly of the senior from Monroe. Eric Edwards has 15 grabs on the season. Matt Mark dials number 47. Good curl pattern, first down, and the Titans have caught 27 passes this year for the LSU Tigers. Very active. He caught five against South Carolina, Eric Edwards. It's been interesting the way the tight ends have been used. They have been basically quiet in some games, like last week, and in other games they have kept, kept, maybe had six or eight receptions. Well, you mentioned South Carolina five for Eric Edwards. David Jones gets into the act and zero. First and ten, long rolling right. He's got all day to throw. Let's go with it. Incomplete at the ten yard line. Skyler Green on a diagonal pattern was behind the secondary. And that one was tossed a little bit too long. He's beaten Eddie Jackson. Little play action, bootleg action right here, and Boy is putting pressure on him. They had to let go of the ball, and Skyler had beaten the defensive back. He gave him a little nudge, a little kiss right there, as Boa did with Matt Mark. Wow, they just missed a great opportunity there. Shiro Carey returns to the game on second and ten. The 11.50 remains in the second period. Oh, cannot get out of the grasp of Desmond Sims, a freshman linebacker, but there is a penalty marker down, and it appears to be a face mask. The freshman from Lilbourne, Missouri, starter at Wolf linebacker, was not fooled on this play. His responsibility was outside, and yes, he did get a hold of Matt Mark, maybe a five-yard penalty there. Great camera work, as we have had all season long by Cox Incidental Sports Television. Face mask against the defense, behind the line. Lynn, we've talked so much about this scoring offense all year long. With that last touchdown, the Tigers have amassed eight, 382 yards, the most points ever scored by an LSU team since 1977. They're the all-time leading scoring team in LSU history. Well, that pretty much puts it in perspective, doesn't it? The number one scoring team in Tiger football history. Joseph Adai is standing behind Matt Ball on second and five. Adai running to the right side is bumped but spins for three. Caleb Miller, a 6'3", 220 pounder, who is second on the club with 104 tackles, knocked him down. No help from Arian Dixon and Jeremy Harold from the inside. Good pursuit by the Arkansas Razorbacks. Tigers looking at a second and short. Get that third and short. Big play here, third and three. And you know, you want to be safe, make sure you keep your distance or, you know, either get a first down or stay in field goal range. This is Skyler Green on the speed handball. Skyler Green makes a move at the 15. He's tackled inside the 10 by Desmond Sims. But it's first and goal, LSU. The Tigers cross up the Razorbacks coming to the near side of the field on the speed handoff. Great blocking. Rodney Reed kick out right there. Peterman up in front of him. And just an outstanding move. Cut on a dime. A, uh, touchdown saving tackle by Sims. But Skylar Green, nice run by the sophomore. If he cuts on a dime, he'll give you a couple of nickels and change, <laughs> won't he? He certainly will, Lynn. And a BAM block by the leader of the BAM blocks, number 14, Michael Clayton. He's had that category. BAM blocks. That's knockouts by wide receivers. Jones is in at fullback. Vincent plowing to the seven, and he's knocked down. The ball may have come loose. Arkansas says that it could be its ball. A guy in red has it, and the Tigers are denied with a red zone fumble. And Huckabee was the culprit for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Denying LSU and just a big defensive stop by the Razorbacks from the visitors. You see him coming from the outside from his left defensive end position, crashing in, causing a fumble, and the red team's on top, and LSU's denied an opportunity for points. 
That was Caleb Miller, the linebacker, who put a right paw on the ball and knocked it loose. Cobbs running right. The Tigers gang tackle him after a three or four yard advance. Jack Cobb was one of those who jumped on him along with Lionel Turner. Well, this fellow, Cedric Cobbs, has been big in the first half. In the SEC, over a thousand yards coming into this game. Watch this, Scotty brings a lot Landry for a little bit of a ride. And you see every one of his runs is yards after contact. Runs away from pursuit, brings Jack Hunt for a ride. And this is a big run he made against the Tiger defense. Full Rector made a touchdown saving tackle. And here's the score, which tied up this game 17 apiece. Cedric Cobbs with a huge first half. Jones on the option. Works his way to the 20, and that is good enough for a first down. Cobbs for the day. Seven rushes, 115 yards. He is averaging better than 16 yards per touch. Pretty serious, and nine scores to go along with that. Matt Jones took a trio of Tigers to bring him to the ground. Matt Jones actually has a better uh, average per play than Jason White of Oklahoma. So he's a dangerous, dangerous player. Talk about the perhaps Heisman Trophy winner this year, Jason Wright of the favorite. He's better per play than he is, than Jason Wright. Matt Jones is the second leading rusher for Arkansas, averaging eight yards per carry. Cobbs doesn't get much that time. Marcus Spears was the first to hit him. And Spears really took a shot to the chops, knocked him, dazed him a little bit. That defense is really being challenged right now, Lynn. You know, Arkansas runs 49 plays a game usually and passes about 25, so they're very front-heavy with the run. 66% of their the plays are running plays. Second and seven. Jones. Lofts it upfield. It's incomplete. Broken up by Travis Daniels. Matt Jones is not the most graceful guy when he starts rolling around in the pocket, but don't let that fool you. He is effective. Matt Jones buying some time, waiting for a break. Now, how's that for an audible? <laughs> if you can't hear me, just look between your legs and take a look at me. What an athlete he is. 18 plays, five passing, 13 running. It Stay with the uh, script as they came into this game. Leading quarterback in terms of rating in the SEC. This one sails on him and is over the head of George Wilson, a 6'1 senior wide receiver. Wilson is the number one pass catcher on this team with 47. And he's dangerous, Lynn, almost 19 points per grab, 19 yards per grab. So you really have to give some attention to the senior from Paducah, Kentucky. Skinner's going to punt it. This is the first time that Arkansas has punted today. Skinner averaging 40 and a half on 44 kicks. He's at one block. Skyler Green waits for a chance. was around his knees, and Skinner just mucked it. And a lot had to do with Daniel Francis, number 37. He's moving around, and Nick Saban kind of confused him. You can't see it in this shot, but it really did confuse. It took the punter's concentration off of the punt snap. Barrington Edwards also in the backfield, so Daniel Francis and Barrington Edwards, a pair of freshmen, big play. You see him moving from the outside, and. Francis comes in. That's 32. Edwards. Edwards and, and Francis. Ed, Edwards got their first great play from. The punter looked like he was looking upfield. And then Barrington Edwards made sure he could not get it away. Well, how about this? LSU gives up one in the red zone on a fumble by Vincent and then gets it back about the same place that it coughed it up a few minutes ago. Poetic justice, perhaps? That's a happy bunch of Tigers. 
Well, that was the uh, meal of choice before the game today, roast pork. Uh, this game that had come down, this will be another nail biter, I have a feeling. A lot of time left all knotted up, eight minutes to go in the first half. My nails have not recovered from last week. This copyrighted telecast of LSU football may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of Cox Sports Television. There's no quit the Arkansas Razorbacks. They had, they've won a couple of overtime games this year, including a seven overtime game against the Kentucky Wildcats. So rest assured, a lot of points. You've got to score a lot of points against these guys. Well, you don't want to get into an overtime game with Arkansas. It's the most experienced team in the country in that category. Exactly right. Hit a seven overtime game against Tennessee last year, Lynn. So they play a lot of free football in Razorback country. First down LSU at the Arkansas nine-yard line. This place is 90,000 plus. Roaring, hoping to watch a team win the Southeastern Conference Western Division Championship today. Ole Miss kept pace with a shutout victory over Mississippi State on Thanksgiving night. And Arkansas beat those Mississippi State Bulldogs 52 to six last week. So uh, everybody's pounding on Jackie Sherrill's team this year, looks like. For the last time. By the way, did you see where Jimbo Fisher took himself out of consideration for the Mississippi State head job? He was to have interviewed over the weekend, but said, no, thank you. I'm staying here in Baton Rouge. What a statement that made to the recruits and the dedication he has to staff Nick Saban here on a good thing is on the verge of a very, very big thing here in Tiger Town. A dive to the five. He's tripped up at the floor. One more little lunge by a die, and he would have been able to pull free. Well, good blocking downfield by Rodney Reed, number 60. His last game as a Tiger. Joseph Adai, good balance. Kevin Stelz with a good block. Good pull by Nate Livings up front, and Adai just lost his balance. Good Adai. kick out right there by Livings. Adai has only scored twice on the ground this year, and those came very early. Second and goal from the four. Stelz is in front of Adai in the eye. Clayton in motion. Adai, left side to the two and no further. This Arkansas team allows 140 yards per game on the ground, 3.8 on average. It has allowed 10 rushing touchdowns. And nothing comes easy down in the red zone against the Razorbacks. As Stacy Seals calls his offensive lineman, the offensive line coach for the Tigers, steely-eyed assassins. They, <laughs> they really know how to drive and they, he wants killers up front and opened some gaping holes and have done just that this entire season. LSU has rushed for 18 scores and passed for 26 to this drive today. Ball play action, throwing it, touchdown LSU! Touchdown Skyler Green! Matt Malk had great vision on that play, Renee. I don't think Skyler Green was anywhere near the number one, maybe not even the number two receiver in that pattern. Good point, Lynn. He went through his progressions and was looking for an open receiver. Skyler Green to the back of the end zone. A late arrival and caught as another touchdown toss. That was Skyler's fifth score of the season. That's a heck of a play down near the goal line, isn't it? The extra point is up and it is good by Chris Jackson. Let's take a pair of looks at this touchdown after the play play, the play fake to Clayton. Skyler Green on the touchdown reception, his fifth of the year, and the Tiger quarterback has thrown in a single season. What a career he's had, and you know, he's talking about dental school right now. He'll be 25 years old in February, and Tiger fans are holding their breath as to what decision he'll make if he will come back next year or enter dental school, and a big, tough decision for him. First and 10 from the 20. Down. He's got a lot of time throwing in a double coverage. It is incomplete. George Wilson had his hands on it, and two Tigers were there covering very closely. Jesse Daniels comes over and helps out Travis Daniels. No relation on George Wilson, a big time receiver, and Jesse Daniels helping out from his safety position. takes 
on Tigers, and he powers his way to the 25. Jesse Daniels hit him first there. The cops are relentless. He's... Boy, that's a good word for him. <laughs> no quit in that Razorback. Talked about the other guys. He's a, he's a home run hitter as well. He talked about he just will pound it, pound it, pound away. And he reminds you a little bit of Amon Green, doesn't he? The way he runs his style and just Green Bay path and running back. Third and five. Arkansas 48% on the year in third down opportunities. Incomplete from behind. Wilson, who has yet to catch one today, and the Tigers had a shot at the interception. Corey Webster was in coverage. Corey Webster almost came up with interception number five. He read that play, trying to throw a little screen pass to George Wilson. He's man up on him, and he just steps right in front. Matt Jones took a big chance throwing that pass with a lot of white shirt Tigers around. How's that for some great camera work? And the isolation on Corey Webster. Jacob Skinner could not get the punt away last time after he bumped the snap. He'll kick to Green or Carey. And it's Skyler Green making a dangerous reception. It'll be first down LSU at the 32-yard line. Tigers, for the first time last week against Ole Miss, put both Green and Carey back in dual receiving formation. Stay tuned for... <laughs> LSU by seven. Five and a half to go, second quarter. Vincent, first carry after the fumble. Steps to the 42, maybe the 43-yard line. A toss sweep to Vincent. Good hole on the outside, allowing him to scoot up for a nice, nice run. And Justin Vincent is taking, really pounding in huge chunks of yardage. Tigers go back to a little bit of running attack since the last uh, series was more of a running game for that score. LSU ran for better than 100 yards in the first quarter and have 143 right now. But the chains will come across from the Arkansas sideline as you see Nick Saban, whose club has weathered a slow start and leads by seven. Interesting story about another Tiger, Lynn David Jones, who plays tight end and fullback. His dad played for the Cleveland Browns. Turkey Joe Jones was an outstanding pass rusher, and his uncle is Charlie Taylor, all-time receiving leader, uh, re leading receiver for the Washington Redskins. Turkey Joe, what a great Turkey name Joe. at Thanksgiving. <laughs> I had to point that out. David Jones, great bloodlines. So 10 on the carry by Justin Vincent. First and 10 LSU. The home team has all three of its timeouts with which to work. 5.22 to go in the first half. Late in motion. Long looking. Long throwing. The tight end has it on the run. David Jones to the 45. He's turned over at the 39-yard line. Tony Bua, out of John Curtis High School, knocked him down right there, but the tight ends get involved again. Edwards had a catch earlier, and that's Jones's first grab. Just talking about David Jones and Papa Turkey Joe and Uncle Charlie are very happy. Nice crab here. Reminiscent of his Uncle Charlie Jones, Char Charlie Taylor, and this is a nice run. Tony Bua with a stop. He's got back-to-back-to-back 100-yard -to -back -to -back tackle uh, seasons for the Razorbacks. David Jones from Silver Spring, Maryland. Actually, he was lined up in the fullback spot that time and shifted out of the backfield against the flow defensively. From the 38, first down, Ball looking to throw again. Too deep in the pattern. This one is headed to the end zone. Tipped and incomplete. It came up a little bit short as Green was running a bit of a post in the middle. And then on the near side, Michael Clayton was running between the numbers and the sideline in a too deep pattern for LSU. And they were the only two receivers possible in this play. And, Mar and Marvin Jackson closed number three on this and barely, almost along with Tony Bua, almost made the interception. Tony Bua is saying right there after the play, I had that one. I had it. But, of course, his teammate did not know he was standing there. He's got a pair of interceptions th thus far this year against Florida and Auburn, so he's got the hands. Just missed that opportunity. Second and ten, the Tigers got a chance to throw it again. Vincent running left, stripped down behind the line. Beasley, among others, 
Got there early along with the defensive end, Jeb Huckabee. Well, Huckabee's all over the field and came into this game with 12 tackle for losses, already had one or two, and well, he's got speed to the ball. He's got three tackle for losses and six tackles against Auburn. He can really light up and all over the field, sideline to sideline. That's uh, Huckabee, number 15. He is also an SEC Academic Honor Roll member. LSU is going to have to get some yardage here to get in the field goal range if it does not pick up the first down. From the 40, third and 12, and the Tigers will burn a timeout here with 3.56 remaining in the second quarter. So LSU facing third and 12 wants to uh, bring the players to the sideline for the brain trust. It was senior day, always an emotional moment before the game as LSU's last year players were introduced. And there is one of them, Stephen Peterman. Preseason All-American. 22 seniors honored today. Jeffrey Henderson, Chad Lavallee. Their four-year record, 36 wins, 13 losses. Jack Hunt there wearing number eight out of Ruston. It brings strong men to their knees knowing this is the last time they'll step foot on the precious Tiger Stadium turf. And it's uh, Chad Lavallee, Rodney Reed, and Stephen Pittman talk about it a little bit about this week. Well, you've been there before. You know what this game means. Let me tell you what, Lynn. It's just it's tough to explain. It means so much to the fans. It means as much or more to these players. And these fans mean so much. The, 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 the atmosphere here at Tiger Stadium, and that's what they're going to miss. You won't see it anywhere else. I don't care if you play 15 years in the NFL, you won't see any, any atmosphere like you do here in Tiger Stadium. You also miss your teammates, all the sweat and the work and the tears and the disappointments and the happiness that go into a four- or five-year career. You really get close to people when you go through this type of activity. And, you know, there's so much work has gone into this season. This team has achieved things that no other team has ever done, and you can almost imagine the work that has gone into this season has almost come to an end. And perhaps more to come. Third and 12 here. Hawk has time. Looking, looking. And he's going to have to run it. Tries to cut back, leans forward. He may have enough for a first down. It is a first down LSU on a cagey run by Matt Moore. And this crowd appreciates the effort from the junior from Jasper, Indiana. That's what he's doing. He's making better decisions. I think an old Matt Mark might have tried to air it out as Skyler Green broke off his route, was deep in the end zone, but Matt just couldn't get it there, just didn't have enough to, umption to get on it, and he just tucked it and ran and reached forward. Just a really smart move by the junior quarterback. First and 10 LSU with 325 and counting in the second quarter. Not much running room there. Justin Vincent clogged up in the middle of the play. And the Tigers will face second and long. Tony Boer again had 13 stops last year against LSU. He's well on his way to another fine afternoon again this year. Well, he really is. And don't you know that he's enjoying it? Number 22 there in the middle of your screen. Someone asked him if you could go back in history and witness one event, what would it be? You know what his answer was? What's that? The Last Supper. Uh, good upbringing there. Last guy. Second and ten. To the ground again. Vincent just unable to run. There were too many Razorbacks around his ankles. Nobody could block one of the linebackers, Caleb Miller. That's Miller, number 43 there. And he just plugged it all up. So the Tigers go to the ground a couple of times and go backward. Now it'll be third and 13 from the 30. Wind kind of takes a bite out of you. Good shot right there of how that wind really feels to these fans here in the stands today. Joseph Adai is in the backfield. Director Gary Kirby getting the best shots possible as he has all season long on Cox Sports Television. Matt Moore whipping it. Incomplete. Intended for Bo, I believe, although Skylar Green appeared to be open ahead of the play between the hash marks. Tony Boyd just dropped back in coverage and he was expecting a, a post pattern by Michael Clayton. That's exactly what he got. And Boyd dropped back and it 
And that zone coverage and did a great job. The senior from River, River Ridge, JT Curtis is players from high school. So now Chris Jackson will attempt a 47-yard field goal. This would be the longest of his Tiger career. He's got the wind behind him. It is up. Is it long enough? It is accurate enough. It is good. Chris Jackson has been a weapon for the Tigers offensively the last couple of weeks. And his confidence has grown and grown. The true freshman from John Curtis. Good follow through. And again, you can see he's kicking off the surface now. He's got confidence. He feels like he can do it. He's not driving as much. And he this hit is a 45-yarder last week against Ole Miss, and he knew right there with that ball in flight that it was going to make it. So a 47-yard field goal by Chris Jackson, the youngster. And that gives LHU its biggest advantage of the day. And, Renee, how topsy-turvy has this been? Arkansas takes a 7-0 lead. Jackson gets a field goal at 7-3. LSU scores. It's 10-7. Arkansas comes back. LSU moves back in front. Now the Tigers at 27-17 have their biggest lead of the day. And, uh, boy, she's keeping warm amongst four or five uh, bodyguards. <laughs> the golden band from Tigerland. She's enjoying it. She'll remember this for a long time. So are they. <laughs> I don't think they're going to want to march on the field at halftime. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> Well, there's hate of the boyfriend, so. <laughs> and it's safe. Everything is safe. This is nothing. Don't read between the lines. 102 seconds remain in the second quarter. We talked a little bit about uh, Chris Jackson earlier this year, Lynn, and he made trading those football cleats for a pair of baseball shoes. And Smoke Laval, he's a pretty outstanding shortstop, and he was recruited by Stanford, Oklahoma, and Michigan, both football and baseball. It took just under four minutes for the Tigers to get the field goal. Nine plays, 38 yards. Jackson's second field goal of the game and his longest in his still very young career. Still have to hold the ball. Benny Brazil. And Nick Saban talked about how they try to free up a guy, a different guy each time on kick coverage. And everybody's done a good job with that. Jackson into the end zone and over the head of Cedric Washington. And so Arkansas puts its offense on the field from the 20-yard line with one minute and 42 seconds remaining. You know, talk about great defenses. Remember back in 1964 when the Razorbacks coached by... Third and ten. Still some time left in the quarter. Jones rolling right. He's being chased. He heaves it upfield. It's a dangerous throw. Intercepted at the 39. Picked off by Corey Webster. Jesse Daniels was pressuring the quarterback. Matt Jones threw a wounded duck into the hands of Corey Webster, his fifth interception of the year. And Corey Webster is favoring that left shoulder. Hope he didn't injure it or anything. He's okay now, it looks like. But Jesse Daniels came with a blitz. Number 31 into your screen. And Kirsten Pittman as well, and Jesse Daniels had a hold of him and made him throw the ball away. Poor decision in a host of Tigers, and Corey Webster comes down with it and slides out of bounds to save. Good move there to save time off the clock. That is a very low percentage throw. It results in the interception, his fifth of the year. He has also defended 21 passes. Joseph Adai in the backfield. Fires it outside. Clinton has his first catch. It's a first down near the 21-yard line. So Michael Clayton's at streak remains alive. He has caught a ball in every game in which he has played in a Tiger uniform. It is his second grab. He had a touchdown catch in this out pattern right here. Stopping the clock with a minute and seven seconds to go, and the Tigers are driving, hopefully, some type of score. Falk eight for 15, 95 yards. And you're right, Renee, that earlier touchdown reception by uh, Clayton was his first one. That's the first one which did not get him into the end zone. <laughs> Tigers go back to the ground. They're enjoying LSU Tiger football on Cox Sports Television. The Tigers hoping to get a little more with less than a minute to play, second quarter. Long surveying the field, tossing to the end zone. Quick touchdown LSU! It's Deffrey Henderson! And he was running alone in the sunlight. A streak pattern by the senior from Abelousa is his last time in Tiger Stadium. Comes down with a big grab and, wow, cushions the Tiger lead. That was his 11th touchdown catch of the season. And Matt Monk has thrown three of them this afternoon. 
LSU gets another point from Chris Jackson, and the Tigers extend their lead. Let's take a double look at the touchdown throw to the senior Palapalusis, Devery Henderson. In his own coverage here, good protection as Devery, wide open, had beat the, the safety deep, and Matt Mark delivers the ball right where it needed to be. Tigers jump to a commanding lead. Nobody came over to help in the middle. Beasley perhaps had outside coverage. This place is going wild as Devery Henderson right in that photographer's face signals we're number one. Well, who's to say? Who's to say what may happen? But this certainly has been a magical season with what the Tigers hope will be an SEC championship game appearance. And then postseason play, 11 touchdowns this year for Devery Henderson. Sometimes he plays in the shadow of his uh, wide receiver teammate, Michael Clayton, but Devery Henderson has had a monster year himself. Devery Henderson set a high water mark for most touchdown catches in a season, breaking Wendell Davis's record back in the late 80s. So, so many records have fallen here on this team this year. And that's the man who keeps this team not too high, not too low. LSU ranked third in the BCS, hoping to get into that number two spot. Michigan just behind at USC at 6.89, but all kinds of things can change over the next week or two. Well, LSU, if they win this game, Lynn, they will play in the SEC championship. Depends what happens there, and a lot of football that yet to be played. Washington. Finds a crease and then is hit hard before he can get to the 30-yard line. He was smacked by Daniel Francis. And Cedric Washington is a guy you really uh, they, they call him maybe the best athlete of this team. Only a freshman. You got to get him on the field. Well, as we close things out here in the first half. Special thanks to Lolly Griffin, David Marques for doing some behind-the-scenes work all season long on Cox Sports Television. And a lot of great, great people make this happen. Some very talented, dedicated folks. Cedric Cobbs runs into Jack Hunt. No quitting Jack Hunt, the senior from Ruston. And what a season he has had. You know, when he came into the season, Lynn, everybody talked about the safety is a suspect position. He's put that to rest early in the season. And, boy, he's had an outstanding year. 55 stops, two for loss, and a, three interceptions, two taking him back to the house. Well, the teams will let this clock expire and get a little early start toward the warm locker room. This LSU crowd has enjoyed it. We hope you have, too, as we come to halftime. The LSU Tigers a lot of points in the first half and lead it 34 to 17. The Tigers looking for win number 11 already with 10 victories this year. And of course, Arkansas losing three in a row at midseason has come back strong and hoping for a very wreaking havoc on this uh, kickoff. Just about set to go here. Arkansas trailing by 17. Most kickoffs today have had to be held to keep the ball from blowing off the tee. Cedric Washington and Corey Birmingham are back to get it. Into the wind, it comes up short, bounces at the 20, it's a free ball, and Arkansas holds on. My goodness, what a collision as Washington and Clayton went head to head and Washington came away with the football. Oh, wow, that was a close call, very much like what LSU experienced as Pierce, number 33, anticipated Washington being a lot closer in. Boy, that is, what a fortunate bounce there for Washington, right into his midsection as Clayton was arriving. As it bounces the other way, LSU ball, much like that Skylar Green fumble at the reverse earlier. Lady Luck. Cedric Cobbs in the backfield, first and ten, just short of the 20-yard line. Jones rolling right, pumping, now firing, incomplete. There was excellent coverage on one, two, three, four potential receivers. 
Eric Alexander eventually was pressuring the quarterback, but there was excellent play in the LSU secondary because play action for a moment had fooled people. And Matt Jones rolls right. And he is a weapon either on the ground or in the air. And you see Marcus Spears and Eric Alexander as he's trying to dial for Richard Smith, former Evangel athlete, incomplete. Jones hands off to Cobbs. And he works his way to the 24, a gain of about five. Marcus Spears and Chad Lavalle. Two of the biggest names up front for the Tigers combined on the stop. Oh, what a great season he's put together, Chad Lively. SEC Player of the Week against Auburn and Ole Miss last week, and he's been that ringleader on the team, touted by many of the best in the nation. Congratulations to number 93, named the Football Writers Association of America, All-America, first team performer this week. And then the Gursky finalist for that award. Coming from the outside of the blitz, he's picked up, but Marcus Spears will not let go. Back at the seven-yard line, and look at this. The big number, 84, just got to the quarterback and would not let him go. Cobbs was going to block Spears, and look at this. He just ran right through that shoulder block. Had a hold of him with some help from Jack Hunt and Marquise Hill, but the 34th sack recorded by the LSU defense, number four for Marcus Spears. And now the punt. Low snap. It's out of there. Skyler Green will watch it bounce, and he'll let it roll. And it takes an Arkansas roll to the LSU 42-yard line. So we will step aside. The Tigers have the ball at their own 42 and a chance to get some at the ball for the first time in the third quarter. Say so you can catch the number one ranked basketball team in the country tomorrow night at 6 o'clock when the Yukon Huskies take the court against Lehigh. See more than 90 college basketball games all season long right here on Cox Sports Television. You want college basketball? You've got it right here at your home for college basketball, Cox Sports Television. And the Yellow Jackets really played a heck of a game against UConn before, so we'll see what happens when the polls come out. I didn't know you were a basketball guy, oh, other than the Hornets. I I'm, know you follow the hometown team. I'm not just a pretty face in the crowd, Lynn. I get around, buddy. <laughs> well, it was a 50-yard punt, but the Tigers still have good field position, courtesy of the sack by Marcus Spears. Vincent, trying to turn the corner, gets a good block from Eric Edwards out there. Vincent is hit late, and flags go firing into the pile. Not much doubt about that, Renee. This will be a run of about eight and some penalty yardage. It appeared Tony Bua was late getting to Vincent. Stretch left. Good play by Justin Vincent. Good blocking on the corner by Eric Edwards. And a not-so-smart play by Tony Bua. Tack on 15 for that play. He ear hold him right here. Bang! Helmet to helmet. They might get a question on the next level on that tackle. It always amazes me when guys get hit a stride or two outside the playing field. Renee, you've played the game. You know when you're getting out of bounds. You know when the other player is out of bounds. Well, you know. That's just, just a bonehead play. Well, you know, I, it is tough to pull up. I'm not going to make excuses. It's tough to pull nah, up. And, and you get in the zone. and uh, it, it's Yeah, you get in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. reception of the year and only his eighth catch and how about that what a play call and it just unfolded beautifully and a 29th grab by a tight end this year a third for a score and david jones talked about him earlier the player from maryland outstanding season as a blocker and receiver lsu dials up a quick touchdown and chris jackson adds the extra point Points are coming a plenty this afternoon. Double play action. Moe puts it on his hip. Looks downfield. And the sophomore from Silver Spring, Maryland, has it for the score. 
LSU advances its lead over Arkansas. Wesley, the go-to guy, Mr. Clutch. Any questions? David Wesley and the Hornets on Cox Sports Television. It's the Hornets and Magic Tuesday night at... Chris Jackson sends it to the right side. Birmingham at the 15. And he survives a hit and then falls down at the 28-yard line. Daniel Francis went head hunting. Birmingham fell forward. And Arkansas puts its offense on the field. Let's take a look at this head knocker right here. True freshman out of Port Barry, number 37, who scored four touchdowns in the state championship game last year. Weighs the lumber to DeCorey Bryant, and we has really stepped up this game and been a special teams extraordinaire. He came pretty close to getting a flag with that right forearm. First and ten. See, I'm a peaceful sort of guy today, Renee. Day after Thanksgiving. You are, Lynn. Cedric Cobbs probes the middle, gets a couple, not much more. Chad Lavallee was there. Working on a New Year's resolution, I see. But the little stretch play, or rather zone run by uh, Arkansas, just short gain, second and about eight. Jones, just three of ten for 84 yards. One touchdown that came on the early throw to DeCorey Birmingham, who's in the game now. Mark Pierce is the fullback. Maximum protection, and they do hand off to Pierce. Not a guy who gets a lot of touches. And he works his way to the 35. He's three yards short of a first down. Eric Alexander was the first among a trio of Tigers. But the thing you got to talk about, you come into this game, and Arkansas is known for their running attack. 66% of their offenses uh, featured around that. So when you get find yourself in a deep hole like this, it's very, very tough to come back. But, you know, so this is not going to be an easy task for Arkansas. running. Cobb's leaning and I believe he has the first down but it's going to be very tight. Cedric Cobbs. I think he has performed better against the Tigers than any of the other marquee running backs in the Southeastern Conference. And you talk about who they have shut down. Shot Williams, Cadillac Williams, uh, South Carolina had some great running backs. Summers and LSU really has had trouble containing Cobbs. Now that football's got a hog on it. And on second glance, I don't think he's got the first down. Wow. Look at that little porker. That's what they call a pigskin. <laughs> you learn something watching these broadcasts, man. I tell you, it's not just football. Ooh. He's got it. By the snout of that little pig. If that was a shorter pick, he wouldn't have made it. Tiger defense in the shadows of Tiger Stadium now as their win starts to whip. That was a first down by a pig bristle. <laughs> a whisker. Made it by a whisker. First and ten. Cobbs. Works out to the 42-yard line. Eric Alexander jumped on him and rode him down. To this Arkansas team, pardon me, Renee, 35 points a game, so it's a club that has been able to score. That's number one in the SEC. 447 yards total offense a game, so it's a team that can pile up the stripes. And uh, LSU well aware of a fourth quarter collapse last year that kept the Tigers out of their second straight SEC championship match. Steps out of the tackle of the middle linebacker, Lionel Turner, and gets some pretty good yardage. Matt Jones hasn't threw an interception earlier, but he hadn't thrown any interceptions in the last month, and he's got 17 career rushing touchdowns, including a 62-yard scamper against New Mexico State earlier this year. As Lionel Turner fights off a block by Cobbs and ushers him out of bounds. By the way, Jones, before the pick today by Webster, was the only SEC quarterback who had not thrown an interception this month. And he was 70% completions 
Yeah, he's been hot. There's a misdirection pitch coming to the near side, and the Tigers are all over it. Alexander was there, and there was some help from Travis Daniels, and Mr. Usley just could not get out of his tracks. Carlos Usley. Matt Jones run the option here, dive, fake dive, and Travis Daniels and Eric Alexander play this about as good as you can get. And that is Richard Smith, pardon me, Richard Smith, the flanker, was the option man. This brings up fourth down. Scott Green will be back to receive it. He has not had much of a chance to return kicks today. That was Richard Smith's first rush attempt of the year. Flag goes down. The kick is hanging. Skyler Green has running room from the 21. He leans forward to the 42-yard line. Let's check the penalty marker, which was dropped by the referee. Someone may have left early. We'll see. The illegal procedure against Arkansas. LSU probably will take field position. Oh, yes. There's Skyler Green after the nice return. Let's take another look. And we talked about he needed 61 yards to surpass Eddie Kinnison in that department in LSU history and returns, breaking initial tackle and just tripped up here. Are he scooting down the sidelines for that game? First down from the LSU 43. Both drives, Renee, here in the third quarter have started about this place on the field. Offense really been in sync the second and third quarter thus far. Vincent reverses. Looks on a tackle, stiff arms, and struggles to the 49. That was Tony Bua holding on. Bua was like a boa, but Vincent took him for a little bit of a ride before Bua squeezed him. And Bua's quite an athlete. He was an outfielder as a freshman uh, on the Arkansas baseball team. Really two-part, two-sport uh, star and really did a great job. He's been a leader, an all-SEC performer, and not an easy task to move from linebacker to free safety. No, it's not. Eight fifty to go. Third quarter. Moss keeps it, but something went awry. I think everybody knew that one, but I'm not sure against whom this penalty will be called. These Razorbacks have eight wins. They're headed to postseason. False start on the Tigers. The LSU misfired in the penalty category four times in the first five minutes, but they've been relatively penalty free since then. Yeah, it really slowed it down. Well, here's what uh, needs to happen for LSU to move ahead in the BCS. Kentucky beats Tennessee. Florida beats Florida State. Georgia beats Georgia Tech. Oregon State beats USC. So. But if Oregon State beats USC, it's all over. and he weaves his way to the Arkansas 40. Jeb Huckabee, the defensive end, was peeling back downfield to tackle him. Little bubble screen to Michael Clayton, his third grab of the game today, and he continues to pile up unbelievable numbers. Rodney Reed over there, Stephen Peterman with a block. Good cutback by Michael Clayton. First down, Tigers. Clayton caught a touchdown pass earlier. That's his third reception of the game. Hawk keeps looking for a block, gets one, but he's tripped up. And a good play by Caleb Miller, who was being blocked to the ground, but still with excellent effort reached through the block. Rodney Reed had thrown a nice block, but Caleb Miller on his way down caught a little bit of Monk's ankle and tripped him up. Caleb Miller really did a good job from his stinger linebacker position to save the uh, senior. Good job. His 38th start here this evening. Speaking of starts, how about some of these guys up front? Bill, ben Wilkerson making his 31st start as the Tiger center. Steven Peterman drawing his 38th consecutive start. Rodney Reed is 45th. On the reverse, dives to the 34-yard line. And Whitworth making his 23rd. 
Remember, Whitworth is still a sophomore. Wilkerson has a year to play next season. Reed and Peterman will graduate. But even though this is an offensive line with a lot of uh, depth and a lot of experience, there's some good players behind these starters, and there are some very well-heeled starters who have a year or two left. Nate Livings will step up next year. He's only a sophomore. Nice wanger, and Terrell McGill, we expect him to be heard from next year. And uh, Doug Plantron has played well in, in reserve. Third down and four. Oh, that's it all. This is a dive. All the way to the 11 yard line. Joe the dive was ankle tackled by Caleb Miller. And Matt Mock did a fine job in trouble right here dumping it off. Mastery as Matt Mock just stood strong. As the pressure was on, Devery Henderson looking for someone to knock down. Has a good kick block right there as a die comes down with yet another, another grab. But it's coming back. It is coming back. An illegal formation. I think it was either too many people on the line or not enough. Well. It's a shame that that play really worked expertly, and Matt Mock did an outstanding job of good ball handling and, and really confused the Arkansas defense. He kind of looked like a point guard dishing it at the last moment coming down the lane. But it comes back to the 40. A die remains in the game. Henderson in motion. Mock on a throwback. Looking now to run. Clayton was covered, and Mark wisely maneuvered upfield. He is near first down yardage. He'll be a yard or so short. Justin Scott, the defensive end, and Tony Bua combined on the stop. They're going to mark him two yards shy at the 32-yard line. It is third down. Well, Chris or, excuse me, fourth down. You know, Matt Mark's runs now have meaning, Lynn. He just doesn't run out of desperation anymore. When he does run, it's a set of something, or sometimes it's a design play. But Matt Mark has come such a long way from last year. This will be a 49-yard attempt for Chris Jackson. It is a fake. And that's good enough for a first down. The holder came up and chugged his way. Ryan Bench. Good to see him get involved after having so many problems with those headaches. Oh, Blaine Besh is a senior this year. His last appearance in a tiger uniform. The other brother of Brett Besh, outstanding receiver here. And Tony Bull makes the stop, but not before Blaine Besh gets much needed first down. And what a oh, he's really overcome so much. And I tell you, all the Tigers are pulling for him. Blaine Besh figured to be an important member of this team this year, but he's had those uh, very mysterious headaches to overcome. He is healthy enough to play. And LSU, for the first time this season, fakes the field goal, and it works. Vincent, weaving to the 23-yard line. Justin Scott took his feet out from under him there. The offensive line continues to have great surge off the front. You know, talk about basketball, Lynn. It's amazing how the analogy was made by the offensive line and how the five up front are very much like a basketball team. They have to work uh, together in sync. They have to know what the one to their right is doing, and it's much like a fast break. Uh, they really have to work together and practice and know each other's moves and know what the capabilities are of the guy next to you. Peterman and Reed on the right side. Wilkerson in the center. Vincent running to the right. Vincent inside the 10. Cuts back. Cuts down LSU. Cuts down Justin Vincent. His sixth rushing touchdown of the year. And this is sixth consecutive start. And it wasn't a bad block, but Michael Clayton delivered the knockout block, if you will, that enabled him to get inside. Forty-seven to seventeen. LSU is pouring it on the Razorbacks. Out of the bench hold, Chris Jackson adds another extra point. Big. It's what's for dinner on the way to the SEC championship game as Justin Vincent runs around the right side all the way to the end zone. Jackson from the six.
been some big hits. The officials are still burrowing under. It's Arkansas's ball. Cedric Washington really took a shot to Corey, Bro to Corey Birmingham. Wow! Dave Peterson, his last game is at Tiger in Tiger Stadium. Gino Gambaluca fighting along with Francis. Arkansas maintains possession. You got a napkin? Uh, I'm a friend. 48-17. <laughs> More pressure. Intercepted by Curry Webster, his second of the game. He is pushed out of bounds at the 13. A late penalty marker goes down. No matter what this flag is, the interception will stand, and the Tigers are poised for yet another score. Oh, they're loving it here. They sniff an SEC championship burn against either Florida or Tennessee or Georgia next week. And you got to like the Tigers are going for that kill shot, as Nick Saban is really stressed, and Jordy talked about it. You don't have enough points against these Razorback Hogs. And just air it out. This is why Matt Jones doesn't pass very often. Corey Webster with his second pick of the game, his third multi-interception game of his career. Richard Smith was the intended receiver. Webster has six interceptions this year. There was a hold on the run back, so the Tigers will have the ball at the 31-yard line. Webster is just one away from his interception total last year of seven. Yes. Take it, Arkansas, to the woodshed. We'll see what happens this series with 354 remaining in the third. Looking, firing outside. It's on the money. Skyler Green spinning and getting to the 16-yard line. A nice down-and-out -out route and a very fine throw by Matt Moore. Atlanta, here we come. And Skyler is really perfecting those routes. At one time, he relied on his speed way too much as he comes off a little gingerly, perhaps. But he was relying on his speed many, many times to get himself out of trouble. But he has learned to work those routes and show some patience. Renee, as we look back over many of the catches by the LSU receivers today, it's remarkable how open they've been. And credit the offensive line for giving Matt Marks a time. Vincent running hard inside the 10. To the nine for the freshman from Lake Charles. Tony Bua, who has played very actively out of the secondary, made another stop. And we've got a couple of penalty markers down now. As you get a look at the LSU sideline, nobody offering smiles yet. There are three flags on the field. We may run this over again. This is one thing Nick Saban is afraid of, that he started getting a little sloppy because you have a very feisty hog defense. Well, those three flags are, are right there together. It would take a bucket of tide to clean those things. <laughs> They're waiting for the call, and we'll get it now. There were two fouls on the play. Dead ball, personal foul against LSU and against Arkansas. Those penalties were all set. So some yapping after the conclusion of the play, an offsetting penalty. They are dead ball fouls, so the Tigers will get the result of the Vincent run. High water mark, LSU, most points they've ever scored against a Razorback team. And with a lot of time left, they look to add to that amount. They were relatively infrequent opponents when Arkansas was a member of the old Southwest Conference, but uh, of course they've been playing them every year since the Razorbacks joined the SEC. Most points they ever scored prior to this game was 36 against the Razorbacks. That was right around graduation time for you, then 1908, I believe. 
36 to 4 victory by the Tigers. <laughs> I don't know if you graduated any of Running hard up the middle gets to the four. This will set up first and goal. Well, that was the homecoming king that year. <laughs> that was your homecoming queen we had a little while ago. Still looks pretty good, I think. Good drive by the Tigers in front offensive line. Whitworth and company. Whitworth leads this team with 112 knockdowns. Make that 15 pancakes. Peterman with 112 knockdowns. LSU has better than a 2-1 to one advantage in total offense. 405 for the Tigers. Pulled out of the line of scrimmage. Pierce Brown, the strong side linebacker who plays behind Miller, made that hit. You know, Pierce, show what kind of talent he is. He had 19 snaps against North Texas. He had five stops. So he makes the most out of his opportunities as Terrell McGill comes into the game. Spelling Nate Livings. Second and goal from the four-yard line. Skyler Green is bumped down hard. And that ball may have come out at the end of the uh, run. Tony Bua was in on yet another one. The LSU's got it. Bo Mosley also was in there. Wilkerson, the center, who started the play, finishes the play. And Ben Wilkerson has really done an outstanding job running that offense up front, calling the plays. We talked about him last week, and, well, he's had an outstanding season. You know, George Yorno, who was defensive line coach here prior, coached some really good ones. And one of them being Robbie Toback, who spent 10 seasons in the NFL as a center, and he feels that Ben Wilkerson has a brighter future than that young man, so what does it look like for him? Wilkerson, the junior from Hemphill, Texas, wearing number 55. He starts the plays for the Tigers. Third and goal. Walk to throw for it. Fire to the outside. Incomplete. The flag goes down. Clayton was being wrestled down as he tried to fake to the middle and then come back to the outside. And there are a pair of flags, no doubt, on uh, Ahmad Carroll. They nicknamed him Batman. He was... Uh, trying for his fourth interception of the year, but he was all over Clayton. Got to say this, he's trying, Batman was trying to, ro he was robbing. Holding against the defense. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. It'll be our automatic first down. When Clayton turned and darted back toward the sideline in the end zone, Carroll grabbed his jersey. Uh, he was, Batman was robbing Michael Clayton have an opportunity for a score. Wow, I've been waiting for that, Lynn. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Michael Clayton with a chance for another score. Pad his total a little bit. Vincent to the backfield. Stelz going the lead block. That's an easy touchdown. LSU, touchdown, Justin Vincent. Nobody touched him, and that was a little Friday afternoon walk in the park. His second touchdown of the game. And his seventh rushing touchdown this year. And you mentioned Stealth with a blow-up block on the linebacker enabled him to get outside, bounce it outside. Good blocking for the entire front wall on that play. The extra point is good. We're coming right into your living rooms as Justin Vincent gets another touchdown for the Tigers. Jerome McGill leading the charge, making sure no one touches Justin Vincent untouched into the end zone. So LSU has scored its second highest point total this year. Only the 59-13 victory over Arizona accounted for more points. You gotta be happy with Ellis next year if Matt Mark does decide to depart to dental school. Well, there are a lot of questions with uh, some very fine junior players who may come out, but we'll worry about that in the spring. There's Marcus Randall. 
It was Marcus Randall who put LSU in a position to win the game last year against Arkansas. The Razorbacks came back in the fourth quarter. What a great game he had. Yes, he did. Prior to that final play. He, had, he was 14 out of 25 for 203 yards in that game. And, wow, he's really stepped up. Birmingham and Cedric Washington will receive the kick off the right foot of Chris Jackson. That's Benny Brazil holding it. Washington from the eight. He is pulled down at the 14-yard line. Well, it appears that the Tigers have taken the starch out of these Razorbacks. Chad White was in on that kick coverage stop. Yet another senior who was introduced in pregame, his last game in Tiger Stadium. Jones has completed only 3 of 11 for 84 yards. One touchdown, that came early to Birmingham, and Webster has intercepted him twice. Cobbs runs through the tackle of uh, Jack Hunt and gets to the 22-yard line. Matt Malk may be done for the day, at least for these uh, moments. He's congratulating Randall. 12 of 19 for Matt, 186 yards. Four more touchdown passes and no interceptions. And Matt Malk now has thrown 27 touchdowns this year as we come to the fourth quarter. Getting a congratulatory... Uh, so the fourth quarter unfolds as Cedric Cobbs runs right. Melvin Oliver got a piece of him. Cedric Cobbs continues to run hard, and he indeed is one of the finest running backs in the land. No quitting that puppy. He will not give up. And another little happy tiger right there. Cobbs came up a fraction short. Third down and less than a yard. Matt Jones has taken every snap at quarterback. He leans, but he's pummeled and may not have advanced. It looked like he was waiting for something to open up behind Doty and Bokerman on the right side. Melvin Oliver just collapsed it. And Chad Lavallee wasn't far from the contact as well. And you look at a fourth down. Wow. That's not a very good effort by Matt Jones or the offensive line. He just was waiting for something to move forward. Nothing did. And he never really put that 6'6", 237-pound frame into it. It was more of a lean than a run. What we said would happen to Skyler Green. See if he can break open Eddie Kittison's record with this run. How's this for respect against the LSU run defense fourth down and less than a foot and Arkansas will punt it Skyler Green makes the catch at the 39 yard line so LSU with good field position again do the Tigers need some points they lead by a lot 55 to 7 was present as the Tigers are out in front 55 to 17 Houston Nutt has had success against LSU but not today New quarterback in. Marcus Randall, the math education major, the junior from Baton Rouge. First down from the 39. Chiron Carey walks into his own man and then goes down at the 45-yard line. Arkansas in the third quarter had 10 yards of total offense. Wow. Randall, better than 64%, 403 yards, two touchdowns. One interception, he's 25 for 39. Last year, 87 for 181 with seven touchdowns. You know, when you think of the success the Tigers have had, this, this season was not won in September through November. It was won back in the spring and the summer. We'll talk about that. Barrington Edwards is in the game. Edwards has the football. Edwards has a first down. Edwards carries a cornerback with him. 
and is inside Arkansas territory at the 45-yard line. Haven't seen Ali Broussard, but he was not 100% this week, and they decided to rest him. Don't think we'll see him, but Barrington Edwards, great opportunity for that young freshman. We talked about how they won. You know, we, we talked about it earlier in the season, Lynn, how they, uh, last year LSU had 17 players that bench pressed 400 pounds or more, and now they're up to 35. They worked on this Taekwondo program, which kept them more flexible and loose, and those are the kind of things that made this Tiger program, built it, the commitment that, that they made that, that this is why the season they're having right now. First and 10 from the 45. Edwards again slices through for three. Allie Broussard was nicked up very early in the game against Ole Miss a week ago. Had some bruised ribs. Practiced a little bit this week, but he's not healthy. And there's really no reason to get him into the ballgame. Barrington, that was opportunity for him, and he's deserved it. He's worked very hard and ran well, and uh, he's got... Uh, 141 make that um, he's got 155 yards rushing thus far this year and just gives him an opportunity to get some much needed playing time and experience second down Marcus Randall to Edwards again and there is a flag thrown that probably will be an illegal block of some sort the line judge on the near side detected something yep holding Well, Rene Nato, right now, as we speak on this Friday afternoon, don't you know that there are some... On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat second down. Don't you know there are some travel agents with busy phones as Ooh. the Tigers get ready to charge to Atlanta? Opponent yet to be determined. It'll be Tennessee, Georgia or Florida. I'm Lynn Rollins, Wene Nato, my sidekick, Jordy Holtberg on the sideline. Second down after the holding call. Marcus Randall gives to Barrington Edwards again. He got his knees locked with somebody at the line of scrimmage. He would have had a lot more room to run. He goes down after about a five-yard advance to the original line of scrimmage. And a gaping hole to the left side. Nice blocking on the left side by McGill and Whitworth. Enabled him to get past the line of scrimmage for a short game. He had a lot of real estate ahead of him. Well, he's got that grin on his face. He knew there was room to juke and move in the secondary. Had he not bumped into one of his own men. Nice to see Benny Brazil in. Hope he gets an opportunity for a catch. He had a rough start this year, but really earned his spurs on special teams. He's played well in uh, tackling on pickoff coverage the last couple of games. Third down, Randall will throw. Looking, firing to the outside, incomplete. Intended for Dwayne Bow. And the freshman from Miami, who has a very bright future as a wide receiver, could not hold on. Looks a little bit like Michael Clayton, doesn't he? The way he catches his style, his, his gait, the way he runs, very much like Michael Clayton. They're about the same size. Clayton at 6'4", 200, Bo 6'3", 202. Birmingham will receive the punt. This is only the second boot of the game for Donnie Jones. That put his end over end. Birmingham. Alexander was around the play. It looked like he knocked the ball loose. Chad White was right there. And watch this. He tries to catch it on the run. He's not looking what's ahead of him. And to Corey Bryant, who left the bicycle in the driveway. Watch this. Crash. You can hear the brakes screeching. And loose ball, LSU football. Did not look to see where he was. And That's Tigers. Great hustle. Alexander on the initial hit, and it may have been White who jumped in on the ball. First down, Tigers in the red zone. Edwards deep behind Marcus Randall. Barrington, nothing. Huckabee, the defensive end, made the stop. What a great game he's had. He's had six stops against Kentucky, six against Auburn, and he brings it. He's had at least that many this game as Corey Abear enters the game. 
a rare appearance. Jimmy Courtney, a senior, number 61, former Jesuit Blue Jay. Corey Hebert, about whom you spoke, a tight end. Sophomore from Lafayette, played at Tourlings Catholic. Stelts is in the game in the I formation. Number 44 is the fullback. Edwards, just nowhere to go. And the Razorbacks are aware at this point that the Tigers won't throw, probably, unless they have to on third down. Which is now. But they got to give it a little credit to Arkansas. There's no quit in the red-shirted visitors as they really converge and stop Barrington Edwards, Houston Nutt. As you said, will have a bowl appearance. Well, there's no quit in the Razorbacks, but there was no secondary play either. The yep. receivers were just running free and dicing up the Arkansas secondary. The offensive line, for the most part, protected Matt Monk very nicely. Four times he connected for touchdowns. Two running touchdowns by Justin Vincent. This Arkansas defense has been gobbled up today. Edwards leaves it on the ground. He got it back. It was just fancy about hitting the hole. Buster Arkansas. Davis in from Sarah Lynn. No, I'm just trying to check some numbers here. The most points that Arkansas has allowed this year, today, of course, but uh, prior to that, Florida got uh, 33 on the Razorbacks. LSU will go for it on fourth and 17. Marcus Randall steps to the 19-yard line. That's where the Razorbacks will put their offense on the field. So basically, Renee, the Arkansas team has allowed 20 points more today to a fired-up LSU bunch than any other team this year. Let's take a timeout. Are you Carlson, You know, Mike the Tiger rep represents so much about LSU. Still in the game, still running hard into the secondary, and he bursts forward for nine. You know, as the curtain drops in this season, Lynn, a couple of games yet to be played, hopefully. You know, so many of these Tigers will move on to the next level, and having to talk to Mike Dettelier, who's probably the best draft analyst anywhere, says it could be as many as six or seven LSU Tigers seniors this year will move on to the next level. That speaks highly of the program that Nick Saban has put together. Well, I'm bringing a little selfish here. I I'm hoping that seniors is the key word. That's exactly what I had in mind. Arkansas runs for a first down. We slide under the seven-minute mark. 55-17 LSU out in front of Arkansas. Jeff Brenner, the executive producer of Cox Sports Television, and of course, uh, our first of three years under the present contract to carry LSU football. Scott Snyder, our producer all year, does a fantastic job here, and with the Hornets, Gary Kirby, likewise, our director today. John Salser on graphics, the multi-talented one. George Matulik, our technical director. And you see the names of some of those folks who make it all possible as we get back to action, the late option pitch. The Corey Birmingham has run out of bounds near the LSU 40-yard line. Sell Warren in maintenance. Oakley on video. Brad Kendrick, our EBS operator. Dave Drago, the tape operator. Melissa Parrott, stage manager. Of course, she's been so great to work with. Mark Rodovich, Knox box operator. You see the folks on the cameras. Golly, they braved the elements, come out hours before. And some have to be with us, then. In the booth. That's hazardous duty. Cobbs. It's thrown down at the 40. Now, these are the people behind the scenes, day in and day out. And you know, the highest compliment you can pay is when you don't notice them, when you expect things to go well, and they do go well. Randy Ward and Chris Monroe on audio. Fred and Dennis, audio utility. Jeremiah, special thanks to Santa Claus, Jim Moriarty. Molly Griffin on stats, David Marques on stats. 
Kevin Wagner and Michael Bonnet from LSU. And the list goes on and on and on. When you get good television, day after day after day after day on Cox Sports Television, there's, uh, there's Charlie. You know, it's the highest compliment you can pay when things continue to be perfect. Yeah, and they make everything. It's, it's a team effort, much like a football game. Ron Gordon took the worst of that last time. First down, Arkansas. Razorbacks stay between the hash marks on the ground. Brian West made the hit. There's Scotty. Uh, he's bundled up and needs to be. And somebody stretching to get into the frame. Why not? <laughs> Brian West with the last stop. I'll tell you what. You now it's about time to start cranking up those VCRs and those video disc recorders if you haven't, because even though the stadium is uh, letting loose some of the uh, 92,000 or so here today. It's going to be a celebration worth hanging around for as Cobbs works his way for a first down inside the 20. Jesse Daniels jumped on his back, but Kevin right there. Renee, you're bundled up. Well, I'm warm right next to Kevin. He keeps me you know, in check here. I've got Lolly blocking the wind on my side. I understand. <laughs> and the sun and the moon. And sometimes creating a little wind. First down from the 18-yard line. Cobb still running hard to the 15. I I've got to vote for Cobbs. Now, there's, there's John, uh, always surrounded by the lovelies. Oh, what a tough, tough. And he takes pay for that? If he could just take that cap off, you'd see the worst hairdo in Baton Rouge. And he takes money for that? Second down from the 15-yard line. Nowhere to go. The stadium police have come out on the field on both ends. They will protect the goalposts. Nick Saban has said, when we win a national championship, that's when you can tear down the goalposts. So I guess if things go on like this, they'll uh, hopefully BCS will cooperate. Jeremiah, Dennis, and Fred. Happy holidays, guys. Hard working guys, huh? Third down. Jones hit as he throws, lobs another one up. It's tipped, it's caught by Birmingham, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown. Jones did a good way, a good job of finding a way to get that ball loose, and then it was tipped, and Birmingham stayed with it, caught it, and then made a hard run to get into the end zone. That's his second touchdown grab of the, this, the game, and Matt Jones, his second toss is 18th of the season. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the first pass completion since the first quarter for Arkansas. Exactly right, Lynn. Alcero with the extra point. It is good. And Arkansas gets 24, the highest point total allowed by LSU this year. But it's all Tigers as we get ready for the SEC championship. 55 to 24. The Tigers looking for their 11th win of the year. Renee, that's easy to say. It rolls off the tongue rather nicely. <laughs> but my goodness, yeah. what a rarity in college football to pick up 11 victories with postseason still ahead. Hopefully two more games. Well, it's going to be two more. Yeah. You hope one of those is just down the road a little bit. That would be nice to be playing 90 miles away. What? Michael Clayton calls for a fair catch at the 26-yard line. 
LSU men's basketball right here on Cox Sports Television in December. You can tune in December 20th, 3 o'clock. Tigers take on Southern Mississippi from the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. That's live December 20th at 3 o'clock only on Cox Sports Television, LSU at Southern Mississippi's Golden Eagles. You know, then you just had to look at Michael Clayton making a fair catch and talking about basketball. He had a chance to play basketball at Florida, Florida State, Miami, and UConn to show you what kind of talent he is. I think he picked the right sport. Oh, he did, but he's very multi-talented. Eric to that which totes it again. Goes straight ahead, and he's whacked after a two-yard pickup. How lucky is number 11? LSU's only previous 11-win year was in 1958 when the Tigers won the national title. You know, Nick Saban said something this week very profound, and he said that the Bulls, a lot of self-gratification spread around a lot of winners. You know, you play to a, like ba basketball and baseball, you just have one winner. With Bulls, you have a lot of talk, and you know, it's self-gratification. A lot of teams get a chance to, to get rewarded for a good season. Second down and long. Barrington Edwards getting a workout. You can hear the shoulder pads cracking as Barrington goes down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, I'm just going to look into the crystal ball a little bit. If LSU wins the Southeastern Conference Championship against either Tennessee, Florida, or Georgia next week, and uh, with that victory, if LSU does not get into the Sugar Bowl, you can pack up and go west. Oh, yeah. Fiesta or Rose, I think, looms in LSU's future, maybe in that order. Uh, yeah, I think Fiesta is the odds-on favorite for that. Fiesta also wants Texas. We know that. The LSU will work some clock. We near the 75-second mark. It's good to see James Fontenot, a senior walk-on in the backfield. He's wearing number 35. There's Barrington Edwards. The Tigers will uh, punt it. Matt Mark has engineered another victory, four touchdown passes. Donnie Jones will kick to DeCorey Birmingham. Donnie Jones, one of the nation's very best. That's a bit of a knuckleball. Birmingham sheds a tackler. Fumble that rolls out of bounds. It'll be Arkansas's football. He's had a lot of bad luck running back punts thus far this evening. Steve Damon got in on the hit. That's a little hug from Chad Lavallee to Nick Saban. Oh, I tell you, he's Chad Lavallee, very much in the mold of a Henry Thomas and those great offense, defensive linemen that moved on to the NFL. And wow, the, the bath for Nick. St. Nick gets a shower. <laughs> well, this stadium is emptying. Of course, folks trying to get an early start on the, the traffic. Watch Nick here. Oh, the policeman gets a little bit of a, a shower, too. He's going, hey, somebody's going to run an extra lap tomorrow for that. I don't think uh, that a little, little grin, just a little grin. I don't think he practiced that. No, that, that wasn't very well done. Not rehearsed at all. The policeman got a little bit of a... No, that, that was bad. I mean, I mean that, that really was a bad shower. A little bit of a sponge bath to the state trooper. As the sun sinks in the west, the Tigers... Well, the Tiger's sun is rising in the west. LSU will go back to the SEC championship game for the second time in three years. And there will be no fourth quarter comeback in 2003 for the Arkansas Razorbacks against the LSU Tigers. that this 92,000 uh, crowd has emptied uh, considerably because, uh, boy, wouldn't it be great if in full throat 
the full house was here at the end of the ball game to congratulate these LSU Tigers. Very much. A very raucous crowd. Has been very supportive all year, even on the road. We've seen it. That's uh, to Corey Birmingham. Jim White. Supports him out of bounds. 14 seconds remain. At the end of this one, we're going to let you enjoy the sights and the sounds of an SEC Western Division champion, a team poised to win an SEC title, a team with a break or two poised to get into a national championship game. That will do it. Enjoy this one, Tiger fans. Enjoy it. the stadium floor here is Jordy Holmberg with a couple of Tiger seniors. Okay, thank you very much. We got Rodney Reed, Stephen Peterman. Guys, first off, for all the LSU fans out there, thank you. It's been a heck of a run. 11 wins, only the second time in LSU history. What does it mean to you? Well, just, just you know, winning it with this group of guys, this is a special group of guys. You know, I don't know if this is the most talented, you know, LSU team ever, but, you know, our, our team chemistry is great, and it's just a great group of guys, you know, and, and a group of guys that you have fun winning with. There's Brady James that wants to congratulate you as well. Stephen, from midway through the second quarter through the end of the third quarter, it was an absolute juggernaut by your club. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, our, the whole team, you know, you, you got to tip your hat to everybody on team, special teams, defense, offense, fans playing the song. <laughs> man, uh, I'm going to miss this, man. I'm going to miss this place. And I love these fans. I love LSU. And, <laughs> Don't cry on me now, big fella. You said the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. All right. Exactly. We're going to whoever it may be. Whoever. All right, guys. Whoever. Right, like, go enjoy it in the locker room. Rodney Reed, Stephen Peterman, it's been a lot of fun. We'll be uh, in Atlanta next weekend. Lynn, Renee, Steve, Scott, Scott, you know. Anyway, go, Scott Schneider, our producer, said clear the path because he's heading home, baby. Back to you guys. Okay, Jordy, thank you very much. Another look at the LSU Tigers as they head to their locker room. No doubt for celebration. No doubt getting ready for Tennessee, Florida, or Georgia next week in the Southeastern Conference Championship game. There are your Western Division champions in 2003.